Hello, this is Michael Osborne with Webucator. In this video, we're going to take a look at the business intelligence markup language and how we can use this BIML tool to declaratively create integration services packages. Now, this video is based on a blog entry by Paul Tabrak. Paul agreed to let us create this video discussing his article, which is available on his blog at the URL shown here. So let's begin by describing what exactly BIML is and why we care. BIML is simply an XML markup language that we can use to declaratively create integration services packages and a bunch of other stuff in business intelligence. Now, why would we care about that? Suppose, for example, <clears throat> that I need to build a uh, package an integration services package containing a single execute SQL task. And in that execute SQL task, I'm going to fire a procedure in my database. Now that's pretty straightforward. I go into uh, the data tools, I add a package, I add my uh, execute SQL task, and away we go. But suppose I need to create a dozen, a dozen packages where each one contains an execute SQL task, but each one fires a different procedure. Now, if I use the designer, I'm going to have to go through this process 12 times where I add a package, I put the uh, appropriate uh, task on the design surface, I go configure it. It's going to be kind of tedious and repetitive. Using BIML, I can do this declaratively, and I can really just kind of copy and paste a chunk of code change the name of the procedure we're firing, and it's going to be a lot faster and a lot cleaner and a lot simpler to do. That's the value of BIML. Now, initially, you might question the need for another XML syntax because, as you may already know, your integration services packages are, in fact, XML already. And you can prove this by opening or looking at a package in your solution. If you right-click on it and say View Code, you'll notice here's a lot of XML. But here's the problem. This XML is a bit fragile. It's a bit difficult to work with. So BIML simply gives us a simpler, easier to understand syntax in order to create our packages. Now, BIML is not a built-in part of SQL Management Studio or Data Tools or any of the tools. It's actually a piece of what's known as the Bids Helper Package, which is available to download from CodePlex. So in order to use this, you're going to need to go to CodePlex and look for the Bids Helper. And when you find the Bids Helper, you will simply click the little Download button pull it down and run the install. It's fairly straightforward. Once it's installed on your machine, the next time you start your SQL Server data tools, it will automatically be included, automatically be part of the data tools installation. Now, I already have the Bids Helper installed in my environment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my SQL Server data tools. Now, as you may have noticed earlier, I had a integration services package already created. That integration services package contains a single package DTSX, which was that simple little XML file we looked at a moment ago. So what I want to do is I want to add a BIML file. Now, because the bids helper has already been installed here, I can simply right click on integration services packages and you'll notice I have an option to add a new BIML file. So I'm simply going to select that option and it creates a file for me. It's called BIML script. Now I'm going to open this guy up. I'm going to double click on it and you'll notice it's just a simple XML stub. So at this point, I'm ready to start adding some of my code. So what exactly can I do here? If I want to add a package, it's really quite straightforward. I could simply do this. I could plug in here a package element and define a package. Now, we need a little more information than that, quite honestly. And I do want to point out when you're doing this, uh, that you do have full IntelliSense support. So, for example, if I were to simply do this, you'll notice it recognizes packages and schemas and projects, all the various pieces and parts that I might need in my BIML file. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw in some code here to create a couple of packages. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a package called linear. Now, in order for this package to work, I'm going to need a connection. So I'm going to define a connections section as well as my package. If I can get my 
designer caught up here. So you'll notice here I have defined a connection section which contains a connection string. Now this isn't filled out. It's probably not pointing to anything. In fact, right now I think it's pointing to AdventureWorks, which doesn't exist on my machine. But you get the idea. I define a connection. And then below that, you'll notice I define a package. In the package, I define this as a linear constraint. In other words, I want my uh, tasks, my steps within the package to happen in a linear fashion. And then within there, I have a execute SQL task, which says fire proc01, has a connection, connection name is SQL01, and for direct input, I'm specifying select one. In other words, I'm passing this information in. Now, one of the interesting things that you should note about the structure here is the fact that my connection is separate from my package. What this means is I can now reuse that connection in multiple packages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go make things a little bit more interesting in my packages. I'm going to replace this packages code with something a little more complex. Specifically what I've done here is in my packages section I have defined two packages. The first one has a linear constraint mode and you'll notice it has two steps. An execute SQL step that executes SQL command 1 and an execute SQL step that executes SQL command 2. In the second package, I do essentially the same thing, but here you'll notice my constraint mode is parallel. In other words, I'm specifying that these tasks can occur in parallel rather than in a linear fashion. All right, so now that I've defined my connection, I've defined my two packages where each, ta each package contains two tasks, one package runs things linear, linear, one runs them parallel, now I'm ready to actually generate the packages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Solution Explorer. Well, first of all, I'm going to save this file, make sure it's all saved properly. I'm then going to right click on this BML script and you'll notice there is an option to generate the SSIS packages. So I'm going to select generate and when I do, you will notice in my Solution Explorer, once it completes, that I now have a package 01 and a package 02. So let's go take a look at these packages in the designer. If I open package 01, you'll notice that I have two steps, SQL command 1, SQL command 2. They run in a linear fashion. I also have a connection defined in my connection manager. Now you'll notice that connection is it's marked red. It doesn't know, it, it's obviously not connected to a database. I'd have to go fix that, but you understand how this works. So let's go look at SQL, I'm sorry, at package 02, and you'll notice package 02 also has two steps, but in this case, they run in parallel. And again, I have the connection down at the bottom. So you should, at this point, understand the value here. It allows me to build repetitive packages with minor changes much easier than trying to do it using the designer. Okay, I'd like to again thank Paul Tabrak for the inspiration for this video. Be sure and check out his blog at the URL you see here for some other articles related to SQL Server Business Intelligence. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it.